So we didn't originally pick an ambulance to be our build out rig. Uh, we originally bought the ambulance thinking we were gonna lift the box off, put a nap hide box on it for doing electrical work. And then we realized this is really cool. We could definitely turn it into a camper. And after doing some Googling and seeing pictures and videos and YouTube of other kind of ambulance campers and overland campers, we decided to give it a go with this one. We've loved the ambulance though, because it is such a structure. It is, you know, a totally built out, designed for being heavy duty. They're safe, they're solid aluminum. Plus this one had pretty low miles on it. We had about 50,000 miles when we got it. And it's the 7.3, so we were in a good spot to say, hey, let's put some money into it, turn it into a home. It'll last us a really long time. And then after it got converted, you know, to four by four over this last year, basically, now we're able to go even further up in the mountains, which is nice. Hi, I'm Chris. And I'm Michelle. And this is our 2003 E450 ambulance named Tanya that started life as an ambulance in Skykomish at the fire department. And then we bought her and turned her into an overland camper. This is our second build in here. We went a couple summers in the original build and we had a little bench bed that we would pull out every night and make. We had the original ambulance cabinets in here and they were just kind of too bulky so we pulled those out. We added a window to add more natural light and then the biggest thing is this bed. We wanted a bed we didn't have to put up and down every morning and night and so this was kind of the main motivator between the first build and the second build and we love it. It's a queen size bed. We mounted it at this height so we had space underneath in the garage but we had plenty of headroom up top. Underneath it, moisture is a big problem in RV beds so we have some wolf mat is what it's called and it basically keeps it up off of the bottom so you don't run into mildew, mold, moisture issues, lets the air circulate underneath. This guy is a three burner 17 inch propane stove and oven so we can make pizzas we can make cookies we can make anything we really want to in this little guy as we could in a regular house we decided to go with propane um, because we already had the water heater that was propane and our uh, heater here which is propane so it was just one system so whenever we run it we want to always vent the moisture that comes from it so we just have the fan that vents it out and we avoid moisture. This is our garbage and recycling drawer and cleaning area that's really handy if we're cooking. Just pop the garbage in there. We wanted a big sink, so we decided to undermount it. It's got great depth. We've got our soap dispenser and a nozzle that gets everything all clean. For the countertop, we did just three quarter inch pine, and then we sanded it down after we'd cut it to the size and the shape for the sink and everything. And then we sealed it with a polystane sealer. So really sturdy, you can get it wet, you can cut stuff on it, pretty heavy duty. It works really well for us. Being an ambulance and being metal on the outside, we wanted to really insulate it well since we spend so much time in the snow. So behind this inch and a quarter beadboard is two inches of insulation. And so we have foam inside of all the walls, all the way around in the ceiling as well to keep everything insulated and warm. The backsplash is a bronze plastic tile backsplash. Comes in sheets, so you just cut it to the shape and then adhere it to the wall. It's plastic so you can wipe it down, doesn't crack, doesn't expand, easy to use and heavy duty. In this drawer, we've got all of our cutlery and kitchen utensils. And we tried to use a lot of the original ambulance things. So like these drawer slides, they're from the original ambulance. Down here, it's our pantry area. We've got all of our pots and pans, our plates. And here we've got little cubes with our food. This is our favorite drawer in the whole ambulance because it is ginormous and it is the catch-all for everything. Under here is access to the garage. It's where we throw all the stuff. So for a fridge, we have a Dometic fridge. 
chest fridge. We've got freezer space, fridge space. It's really nice, it's really efficient. Really like the Dometic. And it slides in and out, and it's got heavy duty rollers underneath. So when you pull it all the way out, you can seat people there, you can seat people there. These are the original cabinets from the ambulance. Michelle designed all the interior. She did all the woodwork for the cabinetry, but we decided to leave these original ones because they were really cool. They were handy, you can see through them. We store books, games, kind of becomes our liquor cabinet. We originally bought the ambulance from the fire department for $8,500 and then put about $15,000 into the second build, a couple thousand into the first build, and then the 4x4 conversion. So we've spent probably $40,000? Probably about $40,000, yeah. So I was a high school teacher for many years and so had summers off and the first summer we just took off. He works remotely so we were able to continue living our lives normally and after that first summer we realized this is what we really like to do, travel and enjoy nature. So we decided to rent out our house. I quit my job. He's still working but uh, rent out the house and hit the road. For the ceiling, we used tongue and groove pine that we just had lying around. Worked really well for us, it was easy to cut. For lights, we used dimmable LEDs so you can dim it down. There are a lot of them. We had quite the argument about how many to put in here. I think it's perfect. Michelle maybe thinks it's a few too many, but since they're dimmable, we can turn them on in zones if we want to. We have three dimmer switches or we can dim them all down. And they're super, um, super efficient when it comes to electricity with all of them on right now. We're burning like two amps of power and this is a lot of them on. For the table, we just basically used a pine board. It's treated with a beeswax, so it's waterproof. We can wipe stuff off of it, and then this just pushes back in. We didn't use slide rails. We actually just used angle iron that we welded into shape, so it's just friction, basically, that slides it in and out for us and keeps it from coming out while we're driving. This is our flip-down television, so it's made for cars, automotive. Runs off a 12 volt, you can plug it into HDMI, USB, and then when we're sitting in bed at night, we can watch movies, stream them up there, which is really nice. This is our shower. We went with a 27 inch Neo Angle pan, trying to get a full shower space into a small um, living space. And the door we bent out of eighth inch aluminum plate. Inside we have FRP on the walls, we have the fan in the top, then we have our hot and cold water. We use a cassette toilet in it, so you can use the toilet and then when it's full, we basically just take the cassette out. And then right back there is a wet environment paper paper towel roll holder. It's by Dometic, really cool. It rolls it up and down for you, so it keeps it all safe and dry. This is our screen door, so when it's hot out, summertime, we don't want bugs to come in. This screen slides all the way to the bottom and latches, and then you can open it both from the inside or the outside. When we're not using it, rolls up out of the way. This is our electrical cabinet here, so when we cut out the walkthrough, to give ourselves the open kind of closet space in here. We rerouted all the electrical from the original box inside of here. So we have basically our shore power charge controller. We have our solar charge controller. We have the controllers for the electric locks. Down here, we have an inverter. So that charges all of our 120 um, when we want to use it. And then this is a big breaker. And then we have a bus panel with a bunch of fuses for all of our circuits throughout. And then this is kind of the command center for it. So we have an amp inside that's Bluetooth, so we can switch inside music, outside music, or play it on the inside and the outside. And then this is the controller for the amp. Here's basically just a charge state controller. It's a little hall sensor inside. That tells us how much power we're using, how much power we have remaining, and then how many volts we have out of our batteries. And then this is the controller for our on-demand hot water heater. 
it's really nice because we can program the exact temperature we want the water to be. So when you're showering, I like it at 105. Michelle likes it at 101. So we can just switch between. And then this is our thermostat for the propane heater. We removed all the original box electrical and kind of redid the front up here. We added the swivel seats, which are super nice. Basically gives you a lazy boy that was a front seat so you can look back this way. And then originally this cut through wasn't quite as large. We enlarged it, but first we had just kind of um, curtains. But what we did was use double cellular blinds. They have like an R rating of like 10 or something crazy. And so we just pulled the seats up, drop it down. And when it's cold out, that seals our cabin off from everything else. So this is our expanded closet area. We took an Ikea shelf, bookshelf, and then just drilled holes and added elastic to keep all of our clothes in. We've got backpacks on hooks hung up here. On the other side, we keep our shoes and then we hang our jackets over here. The first trip we did over a summer, we were on the road for three months. We went everywhere from Canada, down through Idaho, Utah, Arizona, Colorado, California yep. even. So it was a really fun trip. We realized we probably prefer winter van life over summer hot van life. Yeah, it got, especially when we were kind of through Colorado, Arizona, when it was like 100 and 20 out it was crazy hot and that was our first build and that was part of the impetus for us realizing okay there's some stuff we want to change about the bed and so we did that three kind of three month tour living out of it another two months in kind of colder climate and then in washington and then decided we're going to do a rebuild so brought it back started stripping it down this is our collapsible hot tub. So this whole thing breaks down. We can carry it in the back of Tanya. The sides are just made out of three quarter inch plywood with uh, wooden trailer brackets on the corner. So it all snaps apart. Inside, we just have a blue tarp liner that we bought off of eBay. And then this is an M67 immersion heater. So it's military surplus. They're pretty easy to find, about 80, 90 bucks. And you fill this with gasoline, and then it just slowly drips to a burner plate down below, heats the whole body of water, and we can heat the 250 gallons of water in about four hours. But even in the snow, in a handful of hours, we can get it up to 100 degrees. And when we're done, it all collapses back down, packs up, we can throw it in the back of Tanya to go to the next spot by a river or a stream, wherever there's a fresh body of water. We just use a transfer pump to suck it up, pump it into here. The ambulances have a ton of outside storage. We converted this one to be the back of basically our closet. In here we keep our hoses for filling stuff up, our shore power, long cord, and then we have an adapter as well. This one we sealed up um, fully. So this one's actually sealed closed from the inside because it became the backside of our shower. Down here is our battery box. So we have two of the big 8D deep cycle marine batteries here. So 230 amp hours, 230 amp hours. And then they are tied into the solar on the other side that we can move out. And then it's also charged by the truck alternator as well. Being an ambulance, we have two uh, high amp, 130 amp uh, alternators. So. We've got a lot of power on board, so we can just start it up, idle for 10, 15 minutes, recharge our whole system if we need to. These are recovery mats. Uh, we have two of them that clamp to the side. When you're on private forest land in Washington, you actually have to carry a spaded shovel, a Pulaski, and a five pound fire extinguisher, or they'll kick you off. Um, and so we mounted ours on the side, so they were visible and we didn't get stopped as much. So this is our toolbox. Inside we keep our recovery straps, our clavices. We have a toolbox with bottle jack, fix a flat, all the stuff we need to repair the inside, all the stuff we need to repair the outside. We have an awning on this side. It unzips and then we have legs that fold out of it. And then right beside it, 
and above, those are our cellular antennas. So that first one is an omnidirectional antenna. They're made by WeBoost. And then the long pole on the side there, that's a directional antenna. So 95% of the time, the omnidirectional gets us all the service we need. But if we're way out there in the boonies or particularly in like Colorado and Arizona, um, we'd have to flip that directional antenna up, raise the mast like 25 feet, and then we can get line of sight on a cellular antenna. So we can still work out of it, still have internet, still be able to do our jobs. This used to be, I wanna say it was storage underneath where the backboards would go for the ambulance. We lined the whole thing with Rhino liner so that it's all waterproof, and then it's got a drain hole in the back. So we can throw all of our ski gear in here. So we throw our skis in, they can be covered in snow and then as it warms up it all just runs out of the drain hole which is nice and then this is our garage space down here so inside we have basically this is all storage and then we stole store our solar panels on the side over here so we have four of them that fit perfect this way that way we can pull them up pull them out kick the leg out and we can put them out in the sun so we can still park in the shade at first we were gonna have them up top, but then after spending some time in Colorado, we were always searching for the shade. So we actually made it so our solar panels can unpack, get set up in the sun, and then we can run 40 feet of cord back to the ambulance to charge everything. We added a hitch to the back, a receiver here, and one to the front for two reasons. We wanted to be able to carry our motorcycle in either position. Plus I'm still trying to talk Michelle into getting a motorcycle too. So then we can carry two of them. This is storage on the side for our fresh water and for our propane tank. So 45 pound propane tank inside is the biggest that you can carry, still be able to get on ferries. And then this is a 55 gallon fresh water tank. We fill it from this side, plums it through. All of our water, all of our water systems, all of our water pumps, we have put on the inside of the body rather than running underneath. We spend a lot of time where it's really, really cold, and so everything's inside, and then some of the warm air is pulled through the cavities. And when it gets really cold, we actually have a system where we can set this irrigation timer. And so we'll normally open that valve, set the timer basically to two minutes open for every two hours. What that'll do is open the valve, it then pumps the water from basically our entire system through our heater, our on-demand hot water heater, circulates it through the whole system and pumps it back into here. So when we've been in really cold weather where it's like a couple degrees out, it actually then pulls that warm water all the way through our system and keeps this water right at about like 55, 60 degrees. That way even if it's freezing or we leave the ambulance, it keeps everything from freezing up. This is our on-demand hot water heater. It's a Girard. Really cool, the reason we picked it is because it actually has a temperature sensor in it. And if it detects the temperature of basically its plate go below 36 degrees, it'll kick on the burner. So we never actually have to worry about this freezing up. And then in here, this is the cabinet that kind of becomes the catch-all for the water system and the heat system. So we have our pumps on the side, and then this is our suburban propane forced air heater. And then right here, this is basically the automatic door locks. So push the button, locks the front door, locks the back, locks the side door, locks everything up for us, which is really handy. And in here, we use this as shoe storage normally. We also have a mount um, that holds our outboard motor. So we can put our little 15 horse outboard motor inside when we're dragging our dinghy behind us and then grab it out of the side. That way it's safe in here so nobody steals it off the boat. When we first got Tanya, she was a rear wheel drive. Uh, it has the 7.3 liter diesel engine in it. When we got it, it had about 50,000 miles. We've put around 25,000 more miles on it. But after driving in the snow, driving in the mud, driving on logging roads, we decided we wanted to do the conversion. We did a five inch lift in the front. We did a six inch lift in the back. Reverse that other way around. We're right at about 11 miles per gallon no matter where we go, no matter what we're pulling, if we have the boat behind us, over, down a mountain, pretty much flat at 11 miles per gallon now. My advice for building out an ambulance camper, if you have one, to just 
pack up some camping stuff and hit the road for a week, see what you need. Our conversion fits us really well, but it may not fit you well. So figure out what you need, what you want, and go from there. Absolutely. The other thing I would say is take it slow. We did so much research on forums, online, just Googling a lot, watching lots of videos, checking out other people's builds. You know, I mean, this is probably a amalgamation of like 50 other things we saw that we kind of liked and tweaked and put in here. I'm Chris. I'm Michelle. Thank you for taking a tour of Tanya the Ambulance with us. We are also on Instagram at Tanya the Ambulance. It's a mix of build projects, adventures. And links to our Instagram will be in the description below. If you have any questions, thoughts, needs, van stuff, reach out. Hope to see you. Yeah, thanks.